This is Lewis Holt for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Always good to be joined with Ben Shalom here at the famous Peacock Gym here in uh, East London. Um, yeah, you can see the history bounce off the walls and yeah, a nice uh, second. Bouncing off the walls. Yeah, it's bouncing off the walls. But it, is. It, it is bouncing off the walls. Um, it's good to be here. I came here for Ultimate Boxer 2. We did a media work on. I loved the place and it was good to come. Like I always thought it'd be great to do another press conference here. Obviously, Nigel Ben, Lennox Lewis, I think even Fury. Big press conferences here. But obviously, these two, this is where they met. This is where they learned their trade. Never will have thought that they would fight each other. Um, but here we are, fighting each other. And uh, at really important times in their career. Must win fight for both. Really fucking excited for it. Absolutely, for sure. And, you know, we do have to touch on this press conference. Press conference. It was fitting to do it here, obviously, where they first met. But um, yeah, it was uh, O'Hara was, I guess he came on, you could say, good form. Um, yeah, obviously yourself got directed a lot of abuse at that, saying you, know, you do have a lot to learn. But um, yeah, I guess a, a real, real interesting one that's, that makes for a real spicy fight on uh, October 19th. It's why the fight was so attractive, if I'm honest. O'Hara Davis is a big name in British boxing. A massive name. And... Uh, for Adam Azim, although it's not directed at him, this is what we want. The controversy, the, 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 the lines, the, the heat, the pressure, the guy saying that his promoter's made a mistake, the guy that's so confident coming in from world level. He's 22 years old, Adam Azim. He's dealing with a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He's been pushed ever least, headlining on Sky Sports against a guy that's far more experienced with him and a guy that's bringing the heat. And look, the numbers are, speak for themselves. When we announce this fight, the pre sale everything, Copper Box is going to be sold out on October 19th. I truly believe that. It's, uh, it's one of those fights that have caught the imagination. A lot of people will be at home rubbing their hands thinking Shalom's made a big mistake here. And look, Adam deserves a huge amount of credit. For me, he's going to be the standout star of the division and he's going to prove that on October the 19th. But um, yeah, with O'Hara, I actually have to say, and I was thinking it up there, it was, the, he's angry at a lot of the media and he's angry not at me, Not of, me though, not he's me. angry at a lot of the boxing world. And for me, it's, life is, boxing is like a magnifying glass for life. I always say it to people who say what it's like to work at. It's the same as life, but it's just more intense. So like, no one gives a shit about you. When you win, everyone loves you. When you lose, everyone fucking doesn't give a fuck. Everyone's a dog. And everyone's out for themselves, unfortunately. And I think Ahara found that out when he lost, when no one's calling him, no one's texting him, where are his team, etc. Not his, his close guys, but I think he was angry and sad because he, it, it, was, it was a big wake-up call, you know? And to say someone's shot because of one punch or, you know, in a first round is, is, is bullshit. You know, this is, a, this is a top quality fighter, a dangerous fighter, a, a guy that can punch, a guy that's awkward, a guy beforehand who had never lost to anyone but Catrell and Taylor. And we see where they are at. We saw what Taylor went on to achieve, and that was a Taylor in his prime. And Catrell now is probably still unbeaten in many people's eyes. So it's a huge test. And O'Hara brought it today, but it's great for Adam. And uh, honestly, I'm so excited for this fight. I think it's fucking unbelievable. For, for, I, I think it's something to capture the imagination of the public. Absolutely, for sure. And I'm a bit pressed for time, so I did want to quickly move on. And one fight I did want to talk to you about, we know we teased it on the interview on Friday. I think it was just waiting for the post to be announced. Chris Blum Smith unifies in Saudi Arabia against Zerda Ramirez. Um, a great fight um, against, uh, you know, you're kind of the away fighter, though. It's an all stacked Golden Boy card. Um, it's a but, yeah, near, but, you know, it's a whole Golden it's Boy card. Uh, the British Boxing Board, very Chris Blum Smith fans are concerned. British Boxing Control will have involvement. The, the judges are, uh, are very uh, are neutral and everyone's got we're co-promoting that we'll be the licensed promoter from 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 the uk this is and, and but we're obviously it's a golden boy latino night we are absolutely delighted with this fight it's the fight that we wanted and thanks to his excellency for putting on and thinking outside the box and he's wanting to introduce new audiences and the, f the fact that it might be broadcast free it's great to be working with golden boy we we'll obviously worked for the, with them on this fight as well and um for chris bill and smith the fairy tale continues started all the two years ago or two and a half years ago with isaac chamberlain in the war in bournemouth and it's just continued and continued and every fight he comes in the slight underdog and he's come through world title challenges world title defenses mandatory defenses and now unifies it's a fucking fairy tale and i believe 
he'll come in the underdog again and he'll win again and it's going to be a hell of a night and uh, as I say thank you to Riyadh season for, for providing the platform for such a great fight one thing when you first sort of got the Sky gig, Ben, you was always sort of adamant about, you know, I want to work with everyone. You know, you've, you've done deals with you know, sort of top rank and that, but now you actually see it all in fruition now. You see sort of a great relationship you've got with Golden Boy now. Um, and, you know, there's there's obviously the, the, the relationship with Matcham and Queensbury. So does it feel good? It's taken time, but what you're saying has come to fruition. Yeah, and, and that's thanks to Riyadh's season as well, because they've been able to cut away the bullshit. Would it be happening without them now? Would things still be going on without them now? But this is, what we should try and create in boxing is a meritocracy, meritocracy for promoters and for fighters. And so everyone, if you work hard, gets their opportunities. And I think fair play to His Excellency, he doesn't care about the politics. And you look at the, 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 the fights coming up and we forget the, forget people doing you favours, we've worked hard and the fighters have worked to get into their positions. And Boatsy has his big moment, Denny has his big moment, Eubank Jr, Whitaker. Um, Newman Junior returning, Fraser Clark in his big fight, Jack Massey in an absolutely enormous fight, Adam Azim taking his big career test, which is a huge fight, Chris Smith and the unification. Next few weeks are going to be some of the most enjoyable um, few weeks of, of, of boxers' existence because all the fighters that we feel like the underdog, and all our fighters feel like the underdog, and we're now getting to the point where it's like we're here, the fighters are ready. We believe we've got one of the most commercially valuable, stable, if not outside of definitely Fury and AJ in the UK, and and it's time to arrive. And uh, I'm really looking forward to to next week and beyond. And obviously, as you said, great to be working with the promoters. And thank you um, um, to Riyadh Season for their involvement as well. Last one from myself. Um, one thing I actually want to ask you about, we saw Billy Joe Saunders on TalkSport and he talked about being in heavy talks with a fight with Chris Eubank Jr. Um, I guess, is there any truth to that? And do you think, sort of, after all the past, you could see yourself working with Billy Joe again? Yeah, listen, I, I don't fall old grudges, I don't care. <laughs> Billy is a phenomenal fighter. If he comes back, of course, that will fight will happen and I'm just told that by Chris. Chris is so... I've never, he does, he's a calm guy, even with Conor Ben, it's not that deep, like obviously everything that happened, he, 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 there, is, there is a dislike there for what happened. With Billy Joe, it's like a whole other level. So if Billy Joe comes back, that fight will happen because Chris will make sure it happens. He, need, he still thinks about that night. He still thinks about his defeat. He still thinks about everything that has been said. He still thinks about the reaction of Billy Joe to when he lost against Liam Smith, and I'm sure Billy Joe thinks the same when he lost to, to Canella. These guys, there's something underlying. Maybe one, maybe none of us know why it's got that bad, but it's a big if, and 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 and, and we'll have to see Billy Joe come back. Absolutely for sure, Ben. As always, a pleasure to speak to you. Always good to see you, mate. And yeah, uh, hopefully, mate. Hopefully, more shouts from myself at boxer press conferences. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers.